You don't need us to tell you that everything is getting more expensive. In October, prices on some of the most common goods rose 6.2% from a year ago. That includes apparel, where prices have risen nearly 4% since October 2020, and electronics like televisions, which have seen prices jump 10% over the same period. With these rising costs, consumers are naturally looking to stretch their money that much further and maybe put off that bill a little bit longer. Enter buy now, pay later. Companies like Affirm, Klarna, Zip, and Afterpay have seen an explosion in popularity over recent years. They've amassed millions of customers and thousands of partnerships with companies like Target, Amazon, and more. And they're expected to keep growing. So what does that rapid growth of buy now, pay later services mean for e-commerce and the consumer? Okay, let's back up for one second. What exactly is buy now, pay later? How does it work? And how does it differ from traditional credit cards? Well, buy now, pay later is basically a way of spreading out your payments over a relatively short time period. It's usually for small purchases at a retailer. And instead of paying everything up front, you can break out those payments over two months, three months, sometimes even longer. While most of these businesses offer short-term, interest-free installment plans, there are longer-term plans that do carry interest. The plans can be used at a number of retailers, and they've quickly disrupted the traditional store credit card business. Well, most directly at risk, actually, and this might not be the first names that come to mind, are companies like Synchrony and Alliance Data Systems that provide the private label credit cards to retailers, those traditional cards where, you know, you got a Saks card or a Bloomingdale's card. And the most direct thing that Buy Now, Pay Later is substituting for is a really modern version of that kind of retailer-specific private label card. So they're probably the most directly at risk. A firm reported 8.7 million active users in its previous quarter, a 124% increase from a year ago. In June, Afterpay boasted 16.2 million active users, up 63% from the year prior. Over the past 12 months, 37% of Americans made use of a buy now, pay later plan compared to 29% who used a personal loan. And 12% of BNPL borrowers said they used the service five or more times in a year. So buy now, pay later is something that happens at the point of purchase, and you actually opt into it as you make your purchase. Personal loans are a totally different category, generally designed for bigger size loans spread out over a longer period. So for example, uh, maybe you're considering a home renovation and you need to take out a loan for thousands of dollars. That's something that wouldn't make sense for buy now, pay later, but a personal loan that you can sign up for and stretch out over a period of time, probably longer than a year. Europe in particular is leading the adoption of buy now, pay later. 23% of e-commerce transactions in Sweden, home of Klarna, are now done with buy now, pay later services. That number is 19% in Germany and even the UK, where BNPL accounts for 5% of e-commerce transactions, leads the US. Based on our research, around 10 million consumers in the UK have used a form of buy now, pay later uh, in the past 12 months and around 20,000 and merchants in the UK now offer uh, buy now pay later to their customers. Those figures, however, are rising rapidly, especially because buy now pay later providers are onboarding new merchants into their ecosystem at a rapid pace. All those users mean big money. Buy now pay later services accounted for $97 billion in e-commerce payments in 2020. That's according to American payment processor WorldPay. And more and more merchants are hopping on board. A firm reported 102,000 participating merchants, thanks to e-commerce company Shopify, adding support for the brand. And the company just launched a new partnership with the world's most popular online shopping site, Amazon. We're seeing everyone. BNPL has arrived uh, in a sense that half of Americans are fully aware of what it is and are considering using it or are using it. It's no longer just for this demographic or that. It's both Gen Z and Gen X and, and everyone in between. So what does the growing availability of these services mean for consumers? 
77% of respondents told us that buy no pay later actually helps them to spread out the cost of purchases and helps them to better manage their finances. And in fact, over the course of 2020, we estimate that uh, buy no pay later users in the UK saved around 103 million pounds in credit card charges. The NPL also gives shoppers with less than ideal credit history access to funds because many of these services use their own algorithms to determine a borrower's ability to pay, not just a traditional credit score. So if you're looking around and shopping and you don't have a credit card, you know you don't have a strong credit history, you still get the option to sign up for buy now, pay later when you're making a service. And with just a few clicks, you can opt into that and you spread out your payments into something that feels more manageable for your budget. Then there are the merchants. BNPL services provide merchants with new customers they may not have reached before. 23% of stores said they could track a customer's purchase to a direct referral from a BNPL partner. 75% meanwhile said buy now, pay later was a key part of their growth plan over the next year. 57% of merchants using buy no pay later in the UK reported uh, an increase in basket conversion and 47% of merchants actually experienced uh, an increase uh, um, in average order value. Buy now, pay later can even be beneficial for payment processors like Visa and MasterCard because customers make payments to BNPL companies with debit cards. While these new methods of financing provide much more flexibility for consumers, it does come with some risks. As spending rose during the pandemic, the amount of debt consumers were taking on rose too, and some couldn't afford to pay that back. A third of BNPL users reported falling behind on at least one payment, according to Credit Karma. Of those, 72% reported a hit to their credit score for doing so. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau warns that some buy now, pay later brands could charge hefty fees for late payments. They could even hand your debt to collectors. But many BNPL platforms don't report payment history at all. The buy now, pay later providers, they're not typically reporting to the credit bureaus. That means they're not a way to build your credit. So if you're looking for a way to build your credit, which would allow you to qualify for other kinds of loans, buy now, pay later doesn't help you get there. BNPL can also make it easier to buy things you can't necessarily afford. 57% of users said they regretted their purchase because the item was too expensive. At the end of the day, a BNPL purchase is still debt. Buy now, pay later, it's still a form of debt. You're still taking on debt. You have to pay it off. If you miss a payment, there could potentially be penalties like fees added. That does vary by type of provider. So you want to make sure you understand what you're getting into. But the bottom line is that buy now, pay later is still a form of debt that you're taking on and you have to eventually pay off. According to a study by CNR Research, two thirds of shoppers believe that BNPL is, quote, financially risky. Despite this, buy now, pay later companies argue that the services are safer than using a credit card. One of the big differences in the buy now, pay later model is we approve each transaction individually, therefore underwriting it individually, it gives us a lot more control over the exposure we take on. And far more importantly, from my point of view, the exposure our consumers are allowed to take on. The reason BNPL is such a better alternative to credit cards is you're not just piling it all on to a single revolving credit and you know hope to pay it off later. You're actually making a conscious choice to say, hey, this is a plan. I will be done paying for this gift or this item for the next six weeks or six months. So when should you use buy now, pay later? According to Kim Palmer, a personal finance expert at NerdWallet, use a debit card if you have the money because you don't have to sign up for an extra service. If you have an established credit history or credit card, you may qualify for 0% interest on your purchases. And if you don't have an established credit history or no credit card, BNPL can be a good option for spreading payments over a set period. From a consumer's perspective, it's all about comparing the options that are available to you. And for a lot of consumers, buy now, pay later might be the best one that they have that's available. Beyond consumers, some critics have raised concerns about the lack of protections and regulations in place for these BNPL providers. In 2020, Afterpay was forced to refund hundreds of thousands of dollars in fees to California customers after the state deemed the company had been issuing illegal loans. California said the credit sales were structured specifically to avoid consumer protections. But the truth is the regulation of these businesses in the U.S. is murky. 
By now, pay later services are not technically loans, but installment plans. This means many of the U.S. laws and regulations around lending don't apply here. These products also raise important questions about the use of consumer data, the explo exploitation around spending patterns, the application of lending laws, and the potential for unsustainable levels of consumer debt. The UK could actually provide the US with a roadmap for regulation. What we've seen is that the regulator in the UK uh, have been very progressive and, and innovative in recent years. And I think they've managed to find a very good balance between fostering innovation on one side, but then also regulating new sectors like fintech and new emerging technologies, such as buy now, pay later or open banking. Lawmakers in the UK are considering bringing buy now, pay later services under the supervision of the Financial Conduct Authority, which regulates financial services firms and markets in Britain. It would mean stricter guidelines for who BNPL services can lend to and how much. It also means consumers will have a government authority with which they can raise complaints. What we're seeing in the UK, whereby the regulator is actively looking to shape regulation for the buy now pay later sector is indeed likely to be copied by other regulators across the globe, including uh, in the US.